What we're working on here is an idea I've had for making a rope machine, rope making machine made out of bicycle parts. What we've got is an old cluster gear there and a main drive there. Oh, and this all spins good. around. This all spins around and we'll put hooks on here and here. So we can and maybe a third one up there, but that's a different ratio I think. Maybe not. But basically we've got a machine that can spin up rope out of banana fibre. That's the main agenda here. Ah. And then we put a hook on here and here. But I thought maybe look we can make make hook from this one. Oh, yeah. Do a same as that. Yeah. So basically what we got for about ten bucks. Because all these parts were available at a market down in Mojakarta. You know, old push bike parts, a few bits and pieces. Around about 10 bucks worth of stuff. So we'll come back when it's all sorted. I've had a look at a few designs on YouTube and I thought, well, actually, I want to come up with something that they can actually make in the third world without having to buy specialised wheels and cogs and stuff. But these push bike parts are everywhere in the third world, in Asia, Indonesia. And if we can come up with a system that just uses push bike parts, which people can buy so cheaply, I mean, that cost a dollar, that cost a dollar. Uh, this was a chuck out. All this steel here cost me five dollars by, by, by the kilo, this angle line. So that's readily available, second hand angle line. And all we've simply done is use the chain off this old bike, which was long enough to run from this cog to that cog and back over the main sprocket, and cut off one of the arms, so that's out of the road. And on here we'll weld some uh, hooks, here and here, and one here just for fun, see what happens. And then basically all you've got to do is spin the pedal, there's a handle already made, the pedal. And uh, what's important is these cogs are on the exactly same sides. But they're both exactly the same sprocket on both sides, so that these rods spin at exactly the same speed. Because otherwise, if it was on one large one and one small one, you'd end up with this rod spinning faster or slower than the other one so they've got to be exactly the same so that's basically it arc welder angle grinder cut off wheel which are available in most villages and the interesting thing here in Indonesia they don't actually use the uh, well not around here they haven't heard of using the uh, fiber out of the trunk so this will be a new thing hopefully I can inspire some village somewhere around here to start manufacturing banana rope from the throw out banana trunks. They just feed them to the cows at the moment. They don't see any value in them whatsoever. So hopefully this machine will inspire more people to come here and buy, buy the machines off us. We'll make them cheap as chips and get them out there in the villages and people can start making rope out of the banana trunks. So at the moment, my brother-in-law is manufacturing these hooks. There we go, he's just made one up now. Hit it up with the ax. Maybe not, I don't know. I've been watching him. Maybe just bend them cold, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, he's heating them up with the axe. So all we need, basically, is two hooks. We've got, a, got the first one. There's a pattern. these out all day. Got a gas X. And we go to the bit the curve into it. And there we have it. Made hook, a matter of seconds. I 
can go. Easy peasy. There we go. Two hooks made out of scrap rod. And they'll get welded to the rods on the machine. So, what we've decided to do is cut these bolts off shorter because they don't need to be that long. So cut them off and then weld the hooks on. Bingo. Why it's just handy having a gas axe. Handy bit of kit in the old oxycetylene. And this one's run off carbolic. They generate their own acetylene over here. It's much cheaper than buying it in the bottle. They just spend 50 bucks on a container, specialised container. Then they throw the uh, carbolic in, the powder, mix it with water, and then they get acetylene. It's much cheaper, much, much cheaper than buying a bottle of acetylene at CIG. Mind you, the bastards won't let you use it in Australia because it's too cheap. We're supposed to be the land of the free, eh? What a joke. Here we go. So he's going to weld that on. So that's good. That's all sorted. Alright, so there we go, the two hooks are on now. Two hooks are installed. That means all we've got to do now is get some banana trunks and cut them up and give the girl a go. A bit of a take it for a bit of a spin. One banana rope making machine. That's the theory. Yeah, penny. Bagus. Makasi mas. Then we'll put wheels on it. So as I say, the whole idea is to come up with a machine that anyone can build anywhere in the world and use parts that are common, common parts, you know, not just special bearings or special cogs. Anyone can make this anywhere in any village. All they need is an arc welder and a gas axe, and they are in every town and village in the world. So there you go, this is a really simple banana rope making machine. Hello, baby! <laughs> Alright, what we've been doing as we went and got some banana trunk, a banana trunk, massive trunk, it's quite long so we get good fibre out of this. We've cut it up in the strips, we're going to leave it here for a couple of days to dry out because that's really important. You can't make it into rope now, these fibres are way too fragile. So we just cut it up with a knife, we'll let it dry out and then we'll have a go at twisting the rope in about two days time. So stay tuned folks. Okay, so here's the rope make, making machine actually working. The hooks here are spinning this fiber up. We've got our little child labor up here. She's on two lollipops a day to do this. She's gonna stand here for 17 hours and be the string anchor this end. So as you can see, or can you see, it's slowly spinning up, twisting up. When these two fibres are fully twisted, we'll then take that end and put it on one of the... Keep going. More, more, more. We'll take that end and put it on that end and combine the two. There we go. So there's our first half decent rope made using the machine. So it's about six or seven feet long, but that's all it is. Just a big cog, two little cogs, hooks on each end, a bit of a frame to support it all. And when we get a bit more dry fibre out of this lot, we'll start spinning up some serious gauge banana fibre.
at the moment we're just using the real thin ones that have dried out early but yeah that's what it looks like and of course that can be doubled again you can halve that and spin it back on itself and thicken it up or you can use thicker pieces dry it out longer these thicker pieces and make heavier gauge rope that way you can start it with thicker strands it just takes longer to dry them that's all and we've had in the rainy season here so they're sort of getting wet mind you it doesn't take that long it doesn't take that long for them to dry out even if they've been soaked overnight in fact sometimes it doesn't it's preferable that they get washed with water it takes a bit of the gum out of them so that'll all be ready in a couple of days and then we'll spin up some a week maybe a yeah. week. heavier rope